Welcome back to the channel. The last episode may have ended rather abruptly and that's because I lost two episodes of the Wales trip. They were going to feature Tenby where we met some viewers Sue and John and Pendine Sands but annoyingly for me I can't get that footage back even though I've tried. Never mind, onwards and upwards. One of the big benefits of a camper van over the caravan we used to have is that you can use the camper van for day trips. Before we move on to our Forest of Dean trip I'm going to put up this film which I made back in June this year on a day trip to Batemans which is the former home of Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling was an English journalist, a short story writer, poet and novelist. He's probably most famous for writing The Jungle Book and also The Man Who Would Be King, which is one of my favourite films. National Trust car parks are fairly safe, but we still go through the rigmarole of locking up every time. Hey, do you want your hat? Yeah, I'll take it just in case the sun comes out. Kipling was born in Bombay, India on the 30th December 1865. His parents named him Rudyard after a lake in Staffordshire that they were particularly fond of. Kipling was amongst the UK's most popular writers. He lived in several countries and a number of places in the UK but as the years went by he found it harder and harder to maintain his privacy. The public just wanted to meet him and they would often camp out outside his home in the off chance that they might see him. In the end this became too much and so he bought Batemans, a place in the country to escape all the crowds. Rudyard died in 1936 and his wife Caroline left the property to the National Trust when she died in 1939. I've got one. Well done Chutney. Apart from the house the gardens are one of the major attractions here. Between trips we often go out for the day in our van and whenever we do I do try and film because it gives me little filler projects that can go in between the major trips. Carol's the gardener in our family I must admit at the moment I don't have much interest in that as a hobby. Our little garden is designed for absolute minimum maintenance but when our travelling finally stops I'm sure we'll both take far more interest in that aspect. That was the one that Carol photographed. She's off. Loads of people come to National Trust properties just for the pleasant cafeterias. It must cost a fortune to maintain a place like this. This bee doesn't care though. I don't use this camera very much now, a bit too bulky and everybody notices it which is often not very good for filmmaking. Charlie just got told off for not obeying the one way system didn't you Charlie? Told off for coming out the wrong way. Mm. They need to work on their signage a bit more. Never mind, we can console ourselves with our coffee and cake. Chutney always likes to share her cakes. It's not sunny, but if I don't put this hat on my head I'll end up leaving it behind like all the others. What sort of flowers 
are these then? Any idea? They're a type of allium. Allium? Yeah. Mm. Very big ones. I told you Carol was the gardener. I think she learned a lot of this from her parents who were very keen gardeners. The National Trust has an absolute army of volunteers. There's all sorts of things you're able to do, from working in the gardens, meeting and greeting visitors and answering their queries in the house. And Carol's sister actually volunteers at Chartwell, the former home of Winston Churchill. When we were there in June 2021, the pandemic meant that there were one-way systems and queuing in force in order to go into any buildings. It wasn't really a problem and they handled it very well. We tried growing lilies in our pond, but they kept dying. Apologies if this makes you want to go to the loo. This stone used to mark Rudyard Kipling's place of rest in Westminster Abbey. But as you can see it was replaced by a larger one. Kipling has become a little bit of a controversial figure these days because of his support and love for the Empire. Personally though I don't agree with judging people by today's values. Oh, that was a fish but it's a little stick tugging in the water. I know it looks nothing like a fish mm -hmm. now. When you first see it at the corner of your at eye, the corner of your eye you think uh, you've caught a mammoth pike. It's just a stick. Yeah. There's a very sad film about Rudyard Kipling's son, John, who was affectionately known as Jack, who died in the First World War. Kipling wrote a poem titled The Epitaphs of the War. He wrote, If any question why we died, tell them because our fathers lied. As you walk down towards the mill, you'll come across a garden by a small cottage. There's a small plaque to the memory of John and the other men who were killed in the Battle of Luz. <laughs> At the end of the track, is the water mill. <laughs> I'm not sure if the mill is still in use today, but all the apparatus seems to be there and it seems in good working order. I assume that little bell would ring if the hopper ran out of grain. Through the open window we can catch sight of the mill pond. Right, that's as far as we're going. We need to make our way back to the house now to have a little look inside, depending on the queues. Right by where you queue is this lavender, which was absolutely alive with bees. The establishment wanted Kipling as the poet laureate, and they offered him a knighthood on several occasions, but he turned them both down. Sadly, we only got a brief look at the downstairs portion of the house. Because of the COVID restrictions, the flow through the property is very slow.
Um, but say this is the main entrance. Um, like a sort of, you know, reception hall. That's all I've got for you in this one. I hope you enjoyed the visit to Batemans. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more adventures of the Little Red Camper. If you enjoyed the video, then let us know by giving us a like and leaving a comment. Thanks for watching.